Hi. Well, this is a very interesting topic that we are going to embrace while we practice our physical yoga practice called asana, but it's about Ayurveda. And the truth be told is that at the same time that um, yoga was described in the Vedas, Ayurveda was also uh, a part of the program of learning about your body, your doshas actually specifically, your doshas are your physical traits and your tendencies. And to that end, there are three different doshas. Each one of them has two aspects of elements. There is vata, pitta, kapha. So the kapha element represents um, the aspect of people who are tend to be a little bit heavier, a little bit slower, um, have trouble losing weight, but they're really stable, they're really grounded. Sometimes too grounded, like flat out. <laughs> Pitta people are um, quite dynamic, but they can also, in imbalance, be irritable, um, aggressive, impatient. Um, you know, that's an imbalance. Vata people are, and by the way, Pitta, characteristically, physically, more moderate in their size, so neither thin nor heavy, right in the middle. And then there are vata, and vata people <coughs> tend to be um, very slight in their sizing. They also have a tendency towards uh, being dry, dryness, dry hair, dry skin, even dry joints and bones. And hate to say it, but as we age, we all become a little more vata. So of these three doshas, we have all of them. Some of you have done the quiz. Some of you haven't yet to do it. And you will discover that you'll have one or maybe two dominant doshas. And those uh, will represent mostly who you are and what you are, your tendencies, your traits. But the point of this is not to say, oh, you know, one is better than the other. No, one isn't better than the other. They all have their good sides and they all have their imbalances. So we're going to start though with vata. Um, and in terms of yoga, back bends, balancing, and sun salutations are all excellent for all the doshas. But we're starting with vata. So vata, as I said, you know, a lot of musicians, a lot of artists, they have wild hair, they're very thin. Um, you know, it, it doesn't even really have to do with what they eat as much as just who they are, okay? They're just, and, and some of them can be a little spacey. Um, and there can be that vata aspect of somebody saying, oh, did I do something wrong? Like they're just not solid and grounded. So starting with vata, sitting on the ground helps to ground us. If we're having a day where we feel really spacey, really kind of unconnected, disconnected, just kind of like, I need to settle. I'm just like jittery. I'm, I'm all over the place. You may have a job interview um, or an audition or I don't know. Something's coming up. Could be a date, for God's sakes. Bumble. One of those other ones. Okay, so we're grounding ourselves through our sits bones. Pull the flesh away from your sits bones and just sit up tall. And while we're doing this, and flex your feet too. So this is Dandasana, this is staff pose. This is the basis of all sitting poses. You want to feel your sits bones as much as you can. I realize for some of us, sitting up straight like this, not easy. We're gonna make it easier, but we're going to use the idea that we may not be feeling as stable, grounded as we like, and this is how we're going to do it. So I'm teaching you some more techniques in how to take care of yourself, your body. All right, so let's sweep our arms up. We're gonna do Paschimottanasana, which is a forward bend. For a lot of us, it's like, oh no, my back can't take it, my hamstrings can't take it. Just do what you can. And if you need to bend your knees in this posture, go ahead. It's okay. So 
Lift up out of your waist, reach up, stretch up. Now exhale and reach forward. I only want you to come about halfway, just about halfway. So feel the stretch in your lower back. Feel your buttocks connecting. Vata has to do with colon. It's the seat of the colon, the intestines, the stomach. So all of this right now, your stomach and your intestines are pressing up against your thighs. I suspect they should be. And let's go one more time. Reach and stretch. Now exhale and lower as much as you can. Take the furthest part of your leg, foot, ankle, calf, whatever you can take hold of here. Now inhale, you're holding on to something. And as you exhale, forward fold just a little bit more. And while you're here uh, holding that fold, um, Vada conserved with the nervous system. So clearly if we're nervous, our nervous system is overactivated and it's out of balance. So this is how we calm ourselves and ground ourselves when we need to. Air is light, dry, cool, irregular, um, mobile. So there's a tendency, as I said, for spaciness, for agitation, to be nervous. Um, Vata people don't have a regular schedule. Um, or when you're in that state of Vata, you don't have a regular schedule. Um, and you can be very prone to insomnia, constipation. Um, in fact, you know, I let's, in, let's walk our hands back up our legs and let's just spend a moment in um, Dandasana. So I used to work before COVID in um, Europe. That was a seven or eight hour flight once a month. And you know, clearly keeping my bowels movement moving was, you know, a little bit tricky. I'm up in the air. What did I say about not being grounded? I mean, clearly you're not grounded when you're in an airplane. I mean, you're stuck in terms of sitting somewhere, but you are in the air. You are spacey. You are out there. And so constipation can be an issue. Let's try our Paschimottanasana one more time. Inhale, reaching up. So this is, I heard a few dings here. People are coming in a little late, maybe from Pickleball. I don't know. Would that be Sherry and Lisa showing up from Pickleball? Beth and uh, Mara. Oh, Mara. Hi, Mara. Okay. So Mara's a busy, busy, busy mom. All right. So we're just in Paschimottanasana here. Please lengthen your neck. Uh, you are reaching for your ankles, your feet. We're talking about uh, how these postures right now can reduce the tendency for vata. So vata uh, exercise should be a little slower, should be calmer. And that grounding, um, inversions are calming, standing poses, have a longer shavasana. And when it comes to breathing exercises, so one more inhale, reach and stretch. Lifting with your heart, lengthening with your spine, releasing your torso towards your legs, whatever amount, bending at the knees if you need to, it's okay. Um, walk your hands back up. Nadi Shodanan, that's the alternate nostril breathing we do, and Ujjayi. This will help reduce any vata imbalances. So I start, for those of you who came in late, I started talking about a vata. We're going to continue with vata. Twisting poses are really great because remember, vata um, represents the seat, uh, the colon, the intestines, the stomach. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Um, the, uh, you know, if you get a lot of headaches, that can be a vata thing where you're just not grounded, too flighty, too, too like, how about that multitasking thing. So I will do the mirror image. Place your left foot on the outside of your right knee. Interlock your fingers two inches below. Pull your torso towards your bent thigh. Feel your sits bones penetrating into your mat. Feel your spinal column nice and long firm and strong, and then place your left hand behind you to prop yourself up. Reach your right hand up, exhale, twist and turn. If you're able, bring the elbow outside of your knee. If not, wrap it around your knee, whatever 
is available and accessible. And then inhale to lengthen and exhale to twist and turn. So my goal in every class, no matter what the theme, whether it's dogs, cats, vagus nerve, um, your ankles, your feet, we, we, we are covering everything, but in within an hour, uh, there's a limit to what I can do. But I always try to give you a balanced yoga class. So we're addressing your entire being. One more inhalation to lengthen, reach you up through the crown of your head. Exhale, twist to the other side. And feel the release in your spine. Your spine's probably saying, yum, thank you. Let's do the other side. So I'm doing the mirror image. Place your right foot outside of your left knee. Interlock your fingers two inches below. Pull your torso towards your thigh. Flex the foot of the straight leg. Place your right hand behind you to prop yourself up. Inhale the other arm up. Exhale, twist and turn. And breathe. Ah. So the lower back is another issue for Vata people, because Vata people can also tend to be, um, well, because there's so much air, they're not often as stable or solid in their bodies. Their bodies can be very slight. And uh, even though they're thin, they may not have developed the muscles. So we're, we're considering all of the aspects in terms of yoga postures that can alleviate and bring the imbalanced vata back to balance. When it comes to food, vata people or vata, when you're feeling vata, should eat more warm, moist foods. Um, not like, don't have ice water, have the things that will help you feel grounded. So this time of year, of course, soups, stews, casseroles, warm foods. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, twisting to the other side. And we're going to do some back and tummy strengtheners for our uh, vata. So in soft fruits, um, actually, I'm going to send you a link that comes with this replay, or you may have got the one earlier. Uh, so coming to rest on that sweet spot, lift your legs up into boat pose, navasana, and just hang out here. So please engage your core, pull your belly in towards your spine, pull your shoulders back, Keep your chest lifted, keep your spine long. Your eyes are gazing up at the ceiling, hopefully where there's no dust or cobwebs hanging. Ah, <sighs> And then let's try and release one arm. Let's release another arm, keep your legs bent. Now you really feel the full Monty of strengthening your back, strong abs support a strong back, vice and vice versa. Okay, come on all the way down. Yes, and place one hand on each knee. Extend your left leg straight down in front. Keep the right knee bent. Interlock your fingers two inches below your knee. Let's mobilize the ankle and foot joints by flexing, rotating, whatever feels good. Please do it in a way that you're aware of what you're doing i.e. be mindful. Do this mindfully. And again, a vata imbalance is dry joints, crackly, dry skin, dry hair, um, just everything not being as lubricated as it could be. So when we mobilize our ankle joint this way, we lubricate the joints. Now let's place our left hand on the outside of our right knee. Draw that across your body. Extend your right arm out to the right side. And keep a little bit of pressure to stretch out your IT band, your hips, your haunches, your glutes. Feel it. 
Remember to practice with awareness, respect, and compassion. The no pain, no gain approach is, does not apply to yoga. We avoid any type of pain. You might feel a little strain. That's different. We're not here to suffer. We're here to let go of our suffering. And that's all of it, the physical, the emotional, the psychological, just let it go. Yoga will help you release everything from your body that no longer and perhaps never did serve you. It may have been serving your ego, and I'll discuss this at the end of the class today, why our ego can often be more foe than friend. Ah, so breathe into that hip or breathe into your armpit. Maybe you're feeling your pectoralis muscles. Maybe you're feeling your glutes. Whatever you're feeling, go there. Stay there. Be with it. Breathe into it. Inhale, bring that knee back to center. And let's draw the other knee up. And then extend the right leg straight down in front and interlock your fingers two inches below your left knee. And once again, let's mobilize the ankle foot joint by flexing, pointing, rotating, whatever it is that feels good, wrinkling, scrunching your toes, stretching your toes. And breathing, and of course, we're pressing here into the descending colon. We pressed into the ascending with the other leg. So now bring your right hand to the outside of that left knee. Draw it across your body. Extend your left arm shoulder height out to the left side. And apply just enough pressure on the outside of your left knee to give your IT band, your glutes, your hips, a beautiful stretch to release any tightness, tension, stress that may be hiding out in those joints. That stress can be physical, it can be emotional, it can be psychological. I used to have a friend with so much existential stress. That's like a big one. However, he did a lot of yoga to mitigate that stress and meditation. So breathe into the place that may be holding. And by the way, if you're not feeling much, I should have mentioned this on the other side, pull your knee a little bit higher up. Great. And stretch that leg down in front and just turn your palms up for a moment and allow the benefits of your vata balancing. In fact, Shavasana is highly beneficial when we are feeling imbalanced in our vata aspect, which represents air and space, space, ether, um, either word, but air and space are the elements that represent uh, vata. Draw your knees in towards your chest and let's sit up for a moment and let's just do Baddha Konasana for a moment while I chat to you just a little bit about Pitta. We're going to cover the next dosha, Pitta. So Pitta, the elements are uh, water, but mostly fire. So Pitta people tend to be impatient. Uh, I mean, when it's out of balance, they can be super angry, screaming, yelling. I've known a few people like that, but not a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of energy. Um, 
usually the anger is coming out of some deep rooted um, emotional problems. So it's not like I did something, something was lurking. And I mean, if you squeeze an orange, anger doesn't come out, orange juice comes out. So when somebody feels in some way squeezed or threatened, whatever was already in there is coming out. So uh, yoga for Pitta should be cooling um, and it should be uh, heart opening, uh, postures that work on the abdominal area, the twists. So we've done some of these already uh, with, the, with Vata, but um, the literal meaning of Pitta is that which cooks. Uh, so Pitta people typically have very strong digestion. They can eat anything. Uh, they digest a lot, but it also has to do with enzymatic activity and the endocrine system. So these postures that we're going to uh, take for, uh, for Pitta can be very helpful to uh, reduce things like heartburn, um, inflammation, skin rashes. Um, and as I said, somebody who's really um, uh, has a lot of Pitta, they're gonna be so fiery, it'll be tough to, to be around them unless you're really bored. <laughs> You need somebody yelling. Um, okay, so we're going to um, come on to our uh, tummy and do some postures that will also be useful for the third dosha, which is uh, kapha. So we're going to come on to um, our bellies and start out with salabhasana. Okay, so clearly these postures, place your forehead on the floor, have your palms at your, uh, your arms at your side with your palms facing uh, upwards, legs are together, roll an invisible alley with your nose to lengthen your neck, and then lift your head, neck, shoulders, arms, and legs coming up into locust pose, salabhasana. So grounding in the uh, tummy area, in the abdominal area, but lifting and opening the heart, beneficial for both pitta and especially coming up our kapha people who tend to, they're very grounded, they're very stable, but they can hold their emotions in, which probably lends itself to having them look very stable and very grounded. Um, if you follow my drift. And, you know, none of us is perfect. And perfection is not the goal. The goal is really to know ourselves. And in spite of everything, still love ourselves and know that we're just all doing our best. One more inhalation to lift and exhale, turn your head to the right. Let your big toes touch, let your heels splay out, and let your shoulders melt into the mat and just take a moment here. Uh, so Pitta people don't do as well in, in uh, the heat because there's already heat. They don't, uh, even though I said Pitta people could eat hot foods, to be honest, they're more, um, uh, they're better off not eating hot foods, not eating spicy foods. They typically don't like them. And they're very suited to a vegetarian diet and not eating, uh, well, clearly if it's a vegetarian diet, you're not gonna eat meat because meat heats the body, which is why kapha people probably enjoy meat, but not saying anyone should, should eat it, not eat it. Um, by the way, okay, we're gonna try Asana next, and um, it could be that some of us will not be successful at pulling both legs up in Dhanurasana. So you could do the one-legged approach to Dhanurasana. But so let me just uh, demonstrate here. If you're doing one leg, keep your legs together, place one arm in front, and the same arm on the side of the same leg will grab the ankle, and you'll just lift your head and one leg up. That's half down your asana. For those of us who want to try the full uh, Monty here, take your legs wide apart. It makes it easier to grab your ankles. So grab one ankle and then 
take hold of the other ankle. If you get a cramp in your leg, just release it for a moment and take your time. Now, once you're holding on to your ankles, the action here is to kick your ankles back. As soon as I kick my ankles back, it squeezes my shoulder blades together and it lifts my chest off the floor. And then lift your knees off the floor. Lifting up, 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 up. And if you're doing just the one leg, can you change to the other leg? If you're doing Dhanurasana, hang on to your ankles, lower your forehead to the floor. And if you're changing legs, change now. So placing the opposite arm in front and grabbing your leg with your same arm on that side. And then kick that leg back or both legs back coming up into Dhanurasana again. And because some of us probably ate dinner an hour, two hours ago, an hour and a half, we're not gonna do a rocking bow. <sighs> Opening the heart, grounding in the abdominal area, and then releasing. Turn your head to the left. Bring your arms beside your body. Turn the palms up. Big toes touch, heels splay out, shoulders melt. Just let it all melt. Now, while you are just lying there, know that Dhanurasana, the pose we just did, also appeals to Kapha people. Kapha means that which sticks. Kapha elements are earth and water. Now, Kapha people, um, and, and actually the Kapha aspect is what builds and stabilizes the body. We need that. So we need that stability. We need the building, the anabolic activity as opposed to catabolic. We want the building. So the kapha aspect, we want to strengthen that. Um, and we want the body to be smooth functioning. So we, um, now, as I said, the kapha people have a tendency towards broader frames. They gain weight easily. They often have thick, oily hair. When they're imbalanced, they're prone to obesity, heart disease, sinus congestion, bloating, mental lethargy, depression, and they tend to store their emotions. So that can result in a number of stresses in the body. But again, yoga is so good at, at letting and releasing and just getting rid of things. But kapha people need to challenge themselves. They don't, you know, typically what we don't like is often what we should do. And I know in my own life, I lack a lot of focus and discipline sometimes. So I'm all over the place. That's my vata aspect. We're not perfect. Just notice it, be aware of it, and work on it. And you know what? If you never have to work on anything in life, you're never going to feel like, wow, look what I did. So let's just come up from um, lying down on the floor, and let's do uh, one camel pose, Ustrasana. Then we're going to do our sun salutations. Sun salutations are great for every dosha. And I'll talk to you in a moment about how it just slightly differs. So in camel pose, this really opens up the heart center of the kapha and back bends are invigorating. And as I said, kapha people tend to not want to do a whole lot. They, they like to just sit back and watch. <laughs> anyway, so curl your toes under, place your hands on your hips, release your left hand to your heel, and then can you bring your right hand to your heel? And maybe you're just touching them with your fingers. And then try to keep your hips right over your knees. So don't lean back so far. Come forward. Allow your neck to relax. And then bring your right hand to your hip. Bring your left hand. And let's come down into modified child's pose. So take your knees the width of the mat. Big toes touch. Flatten the tops of your feet. Take your buttocks back to your heels. Slowly 
That helps to reduce any foot cramping. And then release your torso between your thighs. If you need some extra height for your forehead to be uh, on the, the mat, then add your forearms, making a pillow by stacking one on top of the other. If you can, place your forehead on the mat and just breathe here. So there are lots of different pranayamas that deal with the doshas. As I said, Nadi showed none. Alternate nostril breathing is grounding for vata. Satali, this is a breathing exercise we haven't done. It's very cooling. So if you're feeling, um, if you're feeling like anxious uh, or like angry, like fuming, steaming, mad, just raving, like wow, and you need to cool yourself down, Inhale, let's press up. I'm going to show you a cooling breath because clearly there are days that we can't just go and do yoga somewhere, but can we find a corner somewhere or a little space where we can go? So Sitali cooling breath. Now, I can't curl my tongue. This is a genetic thing. Some people, my sister can, I can't. Doesn't matter. You can't really put it on a resume and get much with that. But if you breathe in, and then you breathe out. When you breathe in, feel how cooling that is on your tongue. So imagine you're rolling your tongue. You're going to stick it out just a little bit. So it's really the breathing in. This will cool you down when you're feeling upset, irritated, angry. And some of you may be able to roll your tongue, but basically you're just trying to roll it and make turn your tongue into a straw. Sipping the air in, blowing the warm air out, cool air in. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a breathing exercise for kapha uh, later on. So curl your toes under, roll back onto the soles of your feet, let your head hang and then grounding through the soles of your feet slowly roll up one vertebra at a time letting your head be the last thing to come up so once again for vata just standing tall when we're feeling upset uh, out of sorts anxious just standing being still in tadasana can be very helpful. I know the, the little mind says, or says, no, I don't think so. No, I probably need a cocktail. And maybe you do, but <laughs> you might not be able to get one at that moment, but you can stand still. So when we do sun salutations, as I said, it appeals to all the doshas. If you are vata, very airy, very spacey, very out there, you should do it very slowly. Pitta people, they should probably slow it down too, all right? Kapha people, speed it up. Get some energy going, okay? That, that heaviness, that lethargy that, that, that can be the imbalance. Because listen, there are great things about Kapha. They're very like, hey, tech guy's Kapha. And he's terrific, you know, reliable, dependable, stable. But just a little bit lethargic when it comes to some yoga. <laughs> okay, everybody, coming to the front of your mats, We'll do the middle way, not too fast and not too slow. Inhale, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, reach your arms up, look up, reach up and arc back. Ah. And then inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist, hinge from your hips, reach forward, bring your fingertips to the floor, even if you need to bend your knees, and then step your right leg back and drop your knee to the mat. Bring your hands onto your left thigh. If you wish to lift it off the floor, focus your gaze on something that's not moving like a wall, and then come on up, keep your torso straight up and down, no leaning forward, straight up and down, shoulders directly over hips, and then press through your back, the ball of your foot and through your heel. And then inhale, sweep the arms up into that U shape. Keep your shoulders down. 
and breathe. Turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart, bring them down on either side of your front foot, and then take that front foot back to meet the other one, and draw your heart center towards your thumbs. Shoulders away from your ears, reach through the crown of your head. Feel that flexion in your feet, stretching the plantar fascia. Remember, you can always bring your knees to the floor if you need to, but better that if you're not in pain in the wrists, arms, or shoulders, to hold plank pose to strengthen your ability to handle hardship, to tiksha. Now, this posture, of course, may be more difficult for the kapha, who may have a little extra weight, but it might be motivating to let go of, of that kapha axe best, because we all can carry a little extra weight. Release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, leave your hands where they are, and then take your buttocks back to your heels. Bring that belly onto your thighs, your chest towards your knees, so you're lengthening your spine here. Bring your forearms and elbows onto the floor, and then stay nice and low like a snake in the grass, and come forward slowly keeping your bum in the air, and release your chest and your chin onto your mats. Slide everything out behind you. Line up your fingertips with the edges of your shoulders. Place your forehead on the mat. Legs are together. Tops of the feet are flat. Toes are pointing backwards. Elbows into your side body. Forearms down towards the mat. Press your hips and pelvis into the mat. Roll an invisible alley with your nose to lengthen your neck. And on an inhale, lift your head, your neck, your shoulders, and your chest coming up into baby Bhujangasana. Breathing. Mm. Addressing Vata once again, but also Kapha by opening up the heart. One more inhale, exhale, come on all the way down. Curl your toes under and lift your hips up and then walk your feet a couple of inches forward. Now, bend your knees, press your belly onto your thighs, press your chest towards your knees, press all 10 fingers into the mat and now press your heels towards the floor. Great posture for Kapha. It's an energizing posture. Now, it's good for everybody. So when I say it's not just for the, there is no such thing as a Kapha person. There could be a dominance of Kapha in any of us. There are some days where we just feel lethargic, tired, don't want to do anything. And you know what? Maybe that's exactly what you should do that day. Don't do anything. Lift your right leg up, look at your right hand, swing that foot as far forward as you can, or pick it up at the ankle, place it near the front, other leg forward, Uttanasana, another grounding posture for that spacey feeling, that vada, out of balance feeling. Press your feet into the floor, bring your arms beside your ears, Lift up your kneecaps to activate your thighs. Pull your belly in to protect your lower back. Sweep your arms up and overhead. Feet apart for balance. Reach up, look up, and arc back. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees. Sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up. Bring your hands into prayer. Exhale to your heart center. Ha! Ah, and release your hands down. And let's do another round. Inhale, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, reach up, look up, arc back. Inhale, stretch up, exhale, hinge from your hips, reach forward, fingertips to the floor, bend your knees if you need to, please relax your neck. Step your left leg back, drop the knee to the mat, bring your hands onto your front thigh, and if you wish, lift that knee off the floor and inhale, sweep the arms up. No torquing at the lower back. Make sure your shoulders are stacked up over your hips. This is a balanced pose, it's a standing pose, it's grounding, but it's also energizing. So, as I said, sun salutations, good for all three aspects, vata, pitta, kapha. Turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart, take that front leg back, come on into your push-up plank position. 
another grounding posture, but also energizing. We're holding up our own weight against the force of gravity. Breathing. And most of that weight's being held with the upper body. Engage your core, pull your bellies in. Involve pitta. Release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet. Take your buttocks back towards your heels. Release your forearms and elbows. Slowly come forward, releasing your chest and your chin. Slide everything out behind you. Align your fingertips with the edges of your shoulders. Bring your elbows into your side body and then press your forearms down towards the floor. Roll an invisible alley with your nose to lengthen your neck and look straight down at your mat. On an inhale, let's begin to lift the head, the neck, shoulders, chest off the mat. If you're pressing up into the fuller expression of cobra, you can spread your legs apart and press the floor away from you, but don't let your elbows wing out. So this is an energizing posture. It's also grounding. So excellent for all three doshas. One more inhalation, reaching up and exhale, lengthen as you return to earth. Curl your toes under and lift your hips up. Walk your feet a few inches and then bend your knees. Press your belly to your thighs, your heart center towards your knees. Align your ears with your inner arms and now press your heels to the floor. Feel the stretch in the backs of your legs and feel earth to lyric energy coming up through your feet and your hands. Great posture to stimulate a kapha that's out of balance. It's just feeling a little too lazy. This will give you energy. And then lift that left leg up in the air. Look at your left hand. Swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg forward. Let your head hang. Bring your arms beside your ears. Lift up your, um, engage your thighs by lifting on your kneecaps. Pull your belly into your lower back. And then sweep the arms up in front, reaching up and overhead, feet apart for balance, arcing back, inhale, reach up, exhale, forward fold, bend your knees, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up, bring your hands together in prayer to your heart center. <sighs> okay, if you need, take a little sip of water. We're going to continue with some standing uh, postures, which help address a, a kapha imbalance as well as a vata imbalance. So vata being spacey, kapha being uh. All right, so in the center of your mat, take your feet wide apart. And we're gonna turn our right foot towards the front of the mat. And then you're gonna come up on the ball of your back foot take your heel back so that your foot, your back foot is about 30 degrees forward and your back foot is, a, I mean, your front foot's 90, your back foot's about 30 degrees. And with that alignment that we started with, you should be having your heel create a straight line through the arch of your back foot. Feet should be at least three feet apart. So widen up, yeah. Okay, now bend your front knee. Don't let your torso go with it. Leave your torso where it is. Bend your front knee, look down, see your toe inside your knee, press into the outside of your back foot, and then inhale and sweep your arms up to shoulder height and fix your gaze over your right front hand or whichever arm is the front. And then reach and stretch and lower your back arm down your back leg, reaching up, coming up into exalted warrior and then back into virabhadrasana warrior two lower your arms we're going to transition into warrior one and then we're going to come into warrior three okay so bring your back foot forward about six inches 
or maybe a little more. And I want you to turn the foot now instead of 30 degrees angled, about 60 degrees angled forward. I want you to take your front foot towards the outside of your mat so that you can easily square off your hips, your chest, and your shoulders with the front of your mat. So you're facing the front of your mat. You're still gonna bend that front knee. Your um, knee should not go past your ankle. Your back leg will be straight. And then you're gonna inhale, arms up. Coming into warrior one. Now you can straighten the arms in this posture. Enliven your fingers, they should be active not limp front knee stays bent now take your arms turn your palms out and bring your arms down behind your back interlock your fingers squeeze your shoulder blades together so that you almost feel like they could be touching so as much as you can so this again heart opener for kapha we're doing this slow enough so pitta can calm down and we're grounding any spaciness that may be happening for vata. All right, we're gonna come into humble warrior. So lift those arms up as you lead with your heart, bending and bringing your torso inside of your front leg. So remember, balance postures and back bends and sun salutations address equally all of the doshas and then release your hands and keep that front knee bent back leg straight and then inhale let's come up into warrior one once more so your arms are up now shift your weight onto your uh, ball of your back foot and then start to bring the weight onto your front leg you're going to be lifting your back leg off the floor and balancing on your front leg in Virabhadrasana 3, like a T position. So arms in front for a T, or take them to the side like an airplane. Or you can bring your arms and keep them beside your body like a missile. So whatever feels that it works for you, you could try them all. So you can see how energizing this would be for Kapha and then step your foot back and then let's come into the center. Spread your legs wide apart. Arms are out at your side. Inhale, exhale, lead with your hearts. Lengthen your spine as you lower it. Bring your fingertips down to the floor and let your head hang. Let's lunge over to the left side. I'll do the mirror image, so lunge over to the left side. And then up over to the right, be mindful. If you have any groin issues, maybe just don't go very far. If you don't, you can bring your bum close to your heel. And then back up into the center. And now can you align your fingertips? Like make sure your feet, your toes are relatively in a straight line and then bring your fingertips back to line up with your toes. And then inhale and just come up onto your fingertips, lengthen your spine, tabletop your spine. Exhale, let's forward fold one more time, releasing the crown of your head down towards the floor. Now, some of us have longer torsos or shorter toes, torsos. Just imagine that your head could be touching the floor or at least your hair may be skimming the floor. You're lengthening your spine. You're quieting your mind. Bend your knees. Place your hands on your hips. Come on all the way up. Let's do those standing postures now on the opposite side. So pivot on your left foot 90 degrees forward and then come up onto the ball of your back foot and take the heel back. So you're going to have quite a wide stance here. And again, heel of the front foot creates a straight line through the arch of the back foot. So more space between your legs. Yeah, nice. And then bend your front knee. Keep your torso straight up and down. 
keep that sternum lifted stay open in your chest but your chest is mostly to the side not to the front of your mat and then inhale and sweep the arms up to shoulder height so your torso is blossoming more to the side of your mat than the front but your arms pointing front and back in warrior two vira bhadrasana two vira virile strength groundedness stable so excellent for vata and then lower your back arm down your back leg reaching up this is excellent for pitta it's calming it's grounded it's cooling and let's come back to warrior two and now lower your arms and let's bring that back foot about six or eight inches forward and angle the foot so it's about 60 degrees pointing forward while the front one stays at 90 and then just bend your front knee your back leg remains straight and reach those arms up stretch those arms up but keep your shoulders down and your shoulder blades also down your back fingers are activated turn the palms out bring the arms behind your back interlock your fingers squeeze your shoulder blades together what a beautiful posture after we've been either sitting at a computer or picking up kids or whatever it is we do it's mostly in forward flexion so this is a great counter pose to release the stress and tension and lengthen the muscles that have been in contraction all day inhale lift your heart up towards the sky exhale lean forward leading with your heart release your torso next to that front thigh and bring your arms up as high as far as you can mobilizing your shoulder joint please relax your neck here and then release the arms just plant them on the ground your fingertips with that front knee bent and then inhale let's come back up into warrior one so your shoulders, your chest, your hips are aligned with the front of your mat. And we're gonna transition now into warrior three. So come on up onto the ball of your back foot, walk that foot a little bit forward, and then transition your weight onto your front leg. Take your time with balance poses. Focus your gaze as you lift your back leg off the floor, you're tilting your torso to align with your back leg so your body is in the shape of a T or an aeroplane, if you remember what they are. And then your arms could also be beside your body. Back to the aeroplane, energizing. Lovely. Step back. Come on into the center once again and let's twist and take the right hand down to the left foot other arm up in the air come on back up twist to the other side releasing any tension from the lower back and then walk your feet in and slowly roll up so as I mentioned, Pitta has a very strong digestion. They have a lot of fire in their belly, kind of a lot of fire in their personality. But sometimes Vata's digestion can be off and Kapha people sometimes just aren't eating the right diet. So a strong digestion, you know, it used to be we are what we eat. Well, as a nutritionist, we like to say we are what we digest. So let's just practice Uddiyana Bandha and increase the pitta, the fire in the belly. Okay, place your hands. I think we started class a little, a couple minutes late, didn't we? Yeah, so let's just do this a couple times. It's just a great posture. While you're waiting for your rice to, rice to cook, you know, if you, if you do have a slow digestion, this is a powerful uh, technique to improve and and stimulate digestive fire, Anyi. So let's go, Kafa. Get your hands on your thighs. 
talking to tech guy right now. He needs this. Okay, so just relax. You know, it's not like you're not sitting in a chair. You should be fairly comfortable like this. And many of you have done this before. So you just breathe in normally and relax your belly and then exhale, just normal. And inhale and exhale. Now, we're going to inhale one more time. And on your next exhale, you're going to get rid of all of the air, all of the air. So now for you to be able to pull your abs up, like you feel like it's under the rib cage, let's make a false exhalation. And I'm not going to be able to talk then. Okay. So just make sure all the air is out, all of it. And now pull those abs up. You should feel like a hollowing in that area, hollow. When you need to breathe, you stand up. So you feel hollowing in there? <laughs> no, but you have to feel something. So, okay. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, that's, I'm gonna leave that now because we'll revisit, we'll be revisiting Uddiyana Banda again, but let's come down to a seated position just for a moment because I want to introduce one more breathing uh, technique. And this is specifically for when you feel that you need energy. Sometimes we do. Um, sometimes you have too much energy. That's when you do the alternate nostril breathing, but Bastrika and Kapalabhati are the two energizing uh, breathing techniques, uh, pranayama. So we're going to do uh, Kapala body, and that is an active exhalation and a passive inhalation. So just watch for a moment here. Inhaling and a forced exhalation. Okay, so you saw it's like, like I am pulling my abs in to make sure I'm getting all that air out. It's an active exhalation. And then when there's a vacuum in there, inhalation is just passive. Okay, so breathe in normally, sit up tall as comfortably as you can and exhale and inhale and exhale. And last inhale. And let's begin. And that will do. All right, if you need a drink of water before you take Shavasana, please do so. But please take the time for Shavasana right now. Uh, I'm going to remain sitting up. I want to talk to you about a few more things. If there's light in your room and you can dim it or turn it off, that would be marvelous. Or cover your eyes. Turn your palms up in the open and receiving position. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Let your eyeballs sink into their sockets. Bring your heels together. Let your feet splay out and let your body be soft and heavy. In terms of diet, kapha should consider lighter foods, salads, but also um, acidic foods that are filling, like, as I said, meat. Spicy, they can handle that. So in terms of um, the Vedas, these texts, and Veda means knowledge. Yoga represents the practical side, and Ayurveda, the doshas, represents the healing aspect of, of yoga. Now, and they overlap. Our doshas are in constant flux. They're not always the same, so um, yes, you will have a tendency to be one or two of those doshas. But depending on the season, the climate, the environment that you're in, the age that you are, 
they're always in fluctuation. So everything, the environment is, is affecting the dosha and, and, and in general, I mean, whatever's going on in our lives. So every human experience, whether it's emotional, physical, or environmental, is going to have an effect on the balance of the doshas. All three of them are always present. Now, this is not really to do with the doshas as much as it has to do with the real value and the real purpose of yoga, is that suffering is a part of our lives. And the suffering happens due to an attachment. It's an attachment to um, our egos, identifying with ourselves. Me, myself, mine, I, all of that. That's, that is the cause of suffering. If we can transcend the ego or the idea that anything is permanent, whether it's something I have, something I am, Nothing's permanent. Everything is subject to change, all of it, and it will, and it does. So if we want to try to end the suffering and our attachments um, that come out as fear, as anger, as jealousy, as insecurity, and we can lead an ethical life, we can move towards the end of our suffering. And Ayurveda and yoga strives to prevent and remove any of the disturbances in the mind and the body that takes us off the path of peace, of union, of feeling connected, part of belonging, of just generally letting go of this is bad, this is good, this is right, this is wrong. It all just is as it is. And it's the meaning that we give to things that can cause the disturbances that end up in our bodies, in our minds, and become this thing called dis-ease. But I know that your practice tonight has brought you tremendous, I hope, ease, and that you will carry this with you into the deepest of sleep, where you'll be restored, healed, and balanced in body, mind, and spirit. Thank you so much for being with me, and namaste.